Hello guys and welcome to my PvP how-to video. These are going to be an installment of videos just pretty much teaching you guys how to PvP. So we're going to go over lots of different things. Today's video is focusing on movement and positioning, namely defensive movement and positioning. So as you can see, I've worked my way into this tower here and what we're going to do is focus on the defensive portion of my gameplay here. So as you can see, the Zerg is alerted to my presence. The first thing I'm going to do is run up the stairs, change directions, and then go into Mistform. Now, Mistform hides the little icon over top of my head that shows I'm a red player. So the change of directions, of course, is to throw off as many players as possible. I do some pounding heals as I get down here, and once I drop down the next level, barely surviving the fall, I'm going to do the same thing. We're going to change directions, and we're going to go somewhere else. Now, it looks like only one of the players has followed me down here. Well, that's fine. He hits right into my trap. Um, so we're going to quickly put that guy down and then we're going to get uh, back into position here. So as you can see, changing direction is number one thing that we're going to look at for positioning here. When you have a lot of players chasing you, running in the same direction away from them is a great way to eventually get yourself killed. If you have a lot of players chasing you, what you want to do is be dynamic. You want to change directions, go around nooks and corners and crannies, and it's going to make it very difficult for those players to follow you. And the more often you can change directions, the better. It's going to result in more players following you wherever you go. So here you can see um, we see the Zerg coming back our way here. I go into my mist form and I go for a double dodge roll making sure not to take the damage. The rest of the Zerg comes around the front. I get one more roll off and then back into mist form to make sure I can take this damage going into the keep and a lot of damage it is. Oh my lord. So here I am just about dead. I go into my bat swarm so healing here playing a big part. I'm just using the bat swarm as a bit of a stall here so I can reposition myself on these guys. So as you can see here they're chasing me hard around this corner. I am pretty quick on this build. I'm a little bit faster than them. And there you see it yet again. We do the direction change. And that is going to help us lose players. You see that only one of the Sorks was able to keep up with us and continue to attack us after that initial direction change. So we're going to come right back down the edge here, hold block, back into Mistform, jump back across, and voila, without stealth, we have managed to lose this 20-plus man Zerg. So that is a, a big part of the movement there, guys. This is a really great movement clip. Only one kill in it, but most of this clip is just to show you guys that movement in PvP, how powerful changing directions can be, and of course having access to abilities like Mistform, which are going to allow you to escape and continue to move in a direction even when players try to stun you and CC you. So here you can see as I go back into the keep, making sure to take advantage of that mist form. I go into the mist form as soon as I'm susceptible to all their attacks, and uh, it's going to prevent me from getting stunned. It's going to allow me to get through here. So a lot of different classes have different kinds of escape mechanics, etc. Vampirism's cool. I'm using vampirism mist form in order to do my escape mechanics, and it's cool because you can have it on any class. So you know it doesn't matter what class you are, you still have access to something like mist. So as you can see here, I've managed to reposition myself behind the the enemy lines back in their tower and I'm going to go for a quick kill off on that Templar there um, and I actually managed to get the kill so that's pretty cool and I'm left just to fight these two guys here now um, unfortunately for me one of them's a tank and the other one's a healer this is always a tough combination especially when you're in an outnumbered fight because you have to be very aware of your surroundings so what I do here is I just kind of back up try to focus on lots of heavy attacks keep my resources low wait for him to go for the res so I can capitalize on that interrupt and actually kill one of these guys and then I have just the tank left to take down but lo and behold here they come I go right into my uh, bat swarm just to take all that brunt of big incoming damage here comes the whole zerg chasing me and uh, I try to go for the same little maneuver here now I heal myself as I'm falling so I don't take too much fall damage but unfortunately I've got a lot of enemy effects on me and that is the end of that all right guys so let's jump into the next clip so we're back in a tower again. Towers, of course, um, so great for learning and just playing around with movement in general. If you really want to just play around with a movement build, learn how to do it really well. A tower is a great environment to do it. Let your opponents flip the resource, just harry them with arrows or magic spells, and then you can practice kiting them inside the tower once they come to get you. Um, but as you can see here, we are in the tower. We had one player come up, just put a bit of pepper into him and he runs away. We got a couple players coming up here. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go for the heavy attack into a roll dodge right through them. Um, and I actually take a step too far and I end up falling right off the edge there. Take advantage of this moment though, just to do a peel up to the top floor and then I'm going to drop down one level. And now what this has successfully done is it 
is it's gotten rid of pretty much every player following me except these two right here. Now, of course, the effects are on the ground, so once they start fighting me for uh, a few seconds, the other players will be alerted to my location as well. So a lot of moving around is going to be the trick here. Now, a big difference between the build you're seeing me play here and the build that I played the last clip is in is I have a lot more healing power on this build. Um, so you'll see that healing power really come in handy here, um, especially when I go into my swarm there with the two players on top of me. Very, very tanky. They couldn't do any damage. And there you see a really nice animation cancel kill with the heavy attack crit rush, light attack executioner. And we managed to take that guy down. Um, I Honestly, if he had gone for the res a little sooner, I would have given him the bash, but I did have the other players on my tail, and I didn't want to let them know where I was, because I don't want to get pinned down too hard by these guys. So as you can see, I took I dropped down to the outside, and I'm going to come back around the outside of the tower. Um, as I do this, a couple of the players actually jump down to follow me, and a few of them jump down right in front of the tower. So now I know that I've got a good little trail of players right behind me. Um, so I just go right through one of the doors, peel back around behind the keep, just to kind of give myself that space, make sure that if anybody comes up to me, I can be the one to engage them first, and not vice versa. You see here, I go for the combo on this warden here, who I catch kind of alone, um, but his deep fissure stun actually gets me right as I'm going in for that crit rush. Should have held my block there. Um, these guys come to hit me again. I go in for the bat swarm, hoping to get a little bit offensive, but I take a stun and end up just falling down again. Um, so I take advantage of that to just run right back upstairs, make sure I pound my heels, keep my uh, circles down to keep myself very defensible. So as you can see, we finally get this Warden on his own again, and I go in for the kill, get him to 1%, so close to dying, but he does not go down. So I just uh, drop back down again from that Wrecking Blow as I got knocked off, and now I've still got the players on top of me, and these are, of course, higher ranked players. These guys are all fairly experienced, and most importantly, they do quite a bit of damage. So I'm trying my best not to get nuked down. As you can see, my resources have dropped here. I stall as long as I can, pulling up behind these rocks. I've got the Bat Swarm coming up and as soon as I get the swarm up I activate it and go right back into the middle of them get a huge javelin off on this guy and almost take him down there really quick crit rush in to finish him now I don't go for the repentance there could have of course gone for the repentance dodge roll but I just didn't have enough time at the moment get a nice big rally heal there and there's my repentance as I come around the corner I stun the other guy hoping to put a little bit of pepper into him but I take a wrecking blow from that Templar behind him didn't really see the animation uh, with the other player in front of him and uh, I get a really bit of a weird roll off that hill fall off to the side these guys of course putting heavy pressure onto me but I just keep hugging this wall and make sure that I'm changing directions often here you see it he all he needs is one executioner and we drop behind him jump in the air pop the rally and he ends up missing his executioner I stall long enough for the bat swarm just enough time to get my health right back up to full go for the purge here comes the meteor I'm not even gonna block it as I do have CC immunity and my resources are very low and I'm gonna keep sprinting behind these rocks really take advantage of that CC immunity that I have at the moment and of course these guys are still gonna chase me hard there they don't want to let me get away I take a weird stun here I'm unable to break it you see I have about 7k stam there doesn't let me break the stun, but uh, I do survive anyway, so it's not so bad. And then I catch this Templar all by herself. I try to go in for the kill, but as you can see, the rest of the DC players are quick on my tail, and they hit me hard as I come down there. So maybe that was the time when I shouldn't have gone in for that kill and should have been a little bit more careful with my positioning. But anyhow, guys, I want to thank you so much for watching this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and I really hope you guys learned a little bit about movement and PvP. Um, if you guys have any questions for me, feel free to put them in the d comments. Uh, and as always, have a great day, guys. I hope to see you next time.